it doesn't matter whether the ideology makes sense or not. It doesn't matter what what inner contradictions it has or why it doesn't work. It's just the window. It gets to the point where it's just window dressing. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mind Matters. I'm Harrison Cayley, and joining me are Elon Martin and Adam Daniels. Hello. We're back for another show on, well, we're going to get into a little bit about phonerology. Because the question, the question arose a few days ago, Adam, out of nowhere, asked me if, uh, if wokeness, how did you put it, does wokeness really matter, or is it a distraction, or... Yeah, Something I think like I think the actual question that I asked was, "Is wokeism a distraction?" Okay, and I said "yo," which was a combination of yes and no, because this is one of the main points that Lobachevsky makes about ideologies: that on the one hand they are very important, and on the other hand they are, in a different way, they're not that important, or at least they distract from a more central concern. We're going to get into a few ways in which this is important and how we can talk about this. Of course, Lobachevsky was talking about communism, primarily, also fascism in political ponderology. And what he meant by that is that the system of, system of government and the social structure and the, the way that just Soviet society operated, and not just in the Soviet Union, but in the People's democracies like Hungary and Poland, the you know, Eastern Europe, and communist countries around the world, Marxist-Leninist countries, was that communism, the ideology itself, became like a. It became this weird thing, um, and it became that pretty early on. Lobachevsky describes it as going through several stages, but by the time, by, you know, after ten, twenty years, of Marxist, Leninism, or Stalinism in any of these countries, that the ideology basically serves as a mask for something else. And of course, the people living in these countries realize that, and that's why there are so many jokes about, about the system and how, how ridiculous it was, how the, the leaders would say one thing, and the propagandists would say one thing that was just completely at odds with what was actually going on, and to, to even to the level of intentions and motivations, like uh, as... As Lobachevsky says, like he quotes the the speech of just like common workers when they were talking about the about communism in Poland. Now he used a colorful colorful phrase, which I, I won't repeat on air, but basically how the the workers saw the communists as a bunch of a horde of sons of bitches who um, who made their way to the feeding trough on the backs of the working class, and of course the the hardcore communists were the first ones to criticize the you know the bolsheviks for not being real communists because obviously well and he he has a point in the sense that the people that actually believe in an ideology they they should be the ones to be able to tell if the government is if if their revolution is actually living up to the ideals of their own ideology and so i you could and you could apply this in a hypothetical like you know, mind thought or thought experiment to any ideology. Like if you imagine um, Black Lives Matter or someone like uh, a group like that um, ruling their own country and then doing absolutely nothing for black people and in fact like elevating white people and treating black people worse than they were treated beforehand, of course you'd expect Black Lives Matter people to say, well, that's not what we signed up for. That's not what we're actually doing. And you see that actually happening. Like I, I read a story a week or so ago, two weeks ago, about uh, a Black Lives Matter, a Black Black Lives Matter leader in Minnesota, I believe it was, who basically quit the organization because he said, after spending so much time in it, he saw that the leadership didn't care about black people. They didn't care about care about making the lives of black people better, and so he had to leave because he, he said it was a total farce. And you see, you see this phenomenon whenever there's a, a revolutionary movement like this. Uh, the, the, the most kind of humorous one recently was there's this, uh, this black American uh, Muslim journalist. I can't remember his, 
his name, um, but he's he's got a, a social media presence. He was basically stationed in in Idlib, in Syria, for years with Hayat Tahrir. What's their name? HTS Tahrir Al Sham. Basically, what used to be Al Nusra, which what which used to be Al Qaeda in Syria, um, led by Jolani. So he was with these guys for years and defending them and making propaganda for them. And um, he was big on, you know, like I said, on social media. And he was featured on all kinds of news channels reporting from within Idlib with the, with the moderate jihadis. And until, I believe it was last year, sometime last year, he somehow, however he figured it out, he, he realized that HTS was actually torturing prisoners when they said that they hadn't, that that was something that they didn't do. So he spoke, to, spoke out against it, got arrested by HTS, and then spent, uh, spent a bunch of time in prison where he says he, he personally wasn't tortured, but he could hear them doing it in the rooms next to him. And so after he, he was released, he you know, left the area, and now he's basically denouncing Jelani and, uh, and the whole movement saying they're, they're a bunch of fakers, they promised that there would be Islamic justice, and 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 truth and they would do something but they're just they're total fakers and they're not living up to to their ideals so this is the this is the same thing that happens um repeatedly and this is what lobachevsky talks about um in a general sense but from the from the examples of of marxism that there is this there there is an ideology there's an ideological movement and then something happens to the point where the the people who who actually believe in the ideology see that things aren't going the way that they should be going, the way that they wanted them to go, like the, to, to implement the policies they actually wanted, to uphold the values that they actually had. It's not working, and it doesn't work. Till it gets to the point, like in, like in the Soviet Union and the communist countries, where the, the reality was completely at odds with the ideology. And there's a great article... Um, I can't remember what uh, what the outlet, what the publisher is. It's called Lenin Think, one word. And uh, if I if I remember, I'll include it in the the show notes for this show. But um, it's it's a great article about about Lenin and about ideology. And there's this one he quotes um, Leszek Kolakowski, a Polish writer philosopher who wrote a, a massive two or three volume work on the main currents of Marxism. And in that book, he kind of tackles the question in part of it, in, in part of the book on why it is that, or, and how it is that this, this ideology, it's so resilient in the sense that it, it always applies, even when it's applying to something completely different than what it was applied to previously. So that's why you get, um, you'll get Lenin and Stalin and each subsequent leader or generation who then looks back on the previous ones and says that those were just errors and distortions or deviations. And that now, you know, now we're, we're living up to the real ideals. It's basically to, to make up for, for all the bullshit that was going on by either a previous leader or a previous, uh, you know, clique. And then to, so every, every new, venture is justified by the same ideology even if it has nothing to do with reality he makes something the point is something like um in his mind that the the ideology is strictly like a, a strictly serves the purpose and the role of almost just a a framework like a, a criteria a set of criteria that that you have to kind of verbally assent to but within which you can do, you can use it to justify anything. Um, that there's more to it than than that. I can't remember um, exactly how he phrases it, but that there is that phenomenon of the the total total split between what the the words of the ideology actually say and what actually goes on and what actually gets implemented. Um, so they, they have nothing in common with each other, or at the very least, very little in common with each other. So when we ask the question, what, you know, what's the role of wokeness and is it a distraction? Well, it's, 
it has to be looked at in a in a few different ways because of course it is important just like marxism was and is important because that is the framework like that is the justification and perhaps uh well what one important one important avenue for for let's say counteracting you know the influence of marxism or uh, either before or during its kind of um period of being in power and having that much influence is just kind of like a rational critique of it to show what the what the problems inherent in it are but again that won't that won't necessarily those those reasoned arguments won't apply when the ideology itself isn't being used by by reasonable people because the the it doesn't matter whether the ideology makes sense or not it doesn't matter what what inner contradictions it has or why it doesn't work it's just the window it gets to the point where it's just window dressing yeah and so that hypothetically is what wokeism will become given time and just given how how these things play out as it currently is it's being used as the justification for all kinds of uh policies you know transformations um justifications for new social behaviors and um, new ways of going after ideological enemies. So it is, it's essentially been being weaponized at the current time, but there are certain classes of certain categories of people that have different motivations for using it. <clears throat> and th so there are just the, the totally cynical people who would be like the, the communists who are just just using it as window dressing that don't care one way or the other and this is this is woke capitalism like a lot of the the corporations that are getting behind uh, or using um woke imagery and slogans and you know in their marketing campaigns they don't actually care um like there, there was just a story last week about how um i think this was in the uk about the 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 corporations that that uh, were like supporting, was it like a gay pride month or something like that, or LGBT month or something like that, were publicly supporting the, the LGBT movement and then funding politicians, like anti-LGBT politicians at the same time. It's like, it doesn't, uh, there's, they're not, sin they're not sincere in their, their actual beliefs. Of course, you'll also get people who along the same lines are just using it to, to get famous or to make money. Um, just kind of, kind of the same thing uh, as the corporations just on a different scale then you get the people who actually believe it and are sincere about it but you even within that group you have a couple different uh types you have the the people who are just just think it's a, a good cause and have what, what i think any reasonable person would would when seeing it from their perspective would say are um like decent if potentially misguided um, intentions and, uh, and motivations for supporting it. And then you have the people that support it out of, um, and the true believers who support it out of their own, um, like a more deep seated um, resent resentment and like vengefulness and, and wanting to actually tear things down with it. But at the same time, like believing in it. And so it's a, it's a complex problem that you can't, I don't think that you can look at in just in terms of one dimension of, of how you look at it. And the same, it, so the same thing for ideologies as a whole, like one of the things that Lobachevsky points out when he's talking about Marxism is that you could look at Marx and Marx was um, not psychologically all there or, you know, not very psychologically healthy. Lobachevsky cites, um, other psychiatrists and his own opinion that that uh, Marx had schizoid personality disorder. So he's like uh, kind of um, almost on the autistic spectrum, like high in systematizing, um, coming up with these grand philosophical narratives, but um, with emotionally detached essentially, and not having a very good grasp on actual human nature and how to how to interact with humans and 
interact with humans, like understand them and just and get along. There's something kind of um, like socially and emotionally detached in a person like Karl Marx, and you can see this in his life and how he, like in person, he was kind of a um, kind of a, a douche in person. Like he wasn't a he wasn't a good father, wasn't a good husband, and didn't get along with people. Was was um, just like not a very well rounded individual. Um, but you don't get you don't necessarily get the impression of that by just reading his works because you can just read the Communist Manifesto or you know Marx and Engels' works and then see this great body of work that uh, that makes sense of the world and then um, gives this this hint of the of the great future to come. And so when you have a, a, f- a philosophy that is implemented to any degree or becomes the the foundation of uh, a social system, a political system that political system or social system will then have built like baked within it the the flaws that were in the character of the of the person or persons who created the ideology in the first place so that's one level of of distortion that will that will lead to effects because whenever you have something that doesn't match that doesn't map to reality in the test with reality the flaws will become apparent and it will and that and that will make the flaws in the original ideology apparent because it doesn't work in practice. Then there's, but there's more levels than that. When a personality, another personality disordered person gets a hold of that ideology, they will then further modify it and weaponize it for their own purposes. This would be, for example, Leninism. So Lenin warped and modified Marxism for his own purposes um, to, a, to, a, uh, to a degree and, and into a form that Marx probably, probably wouldn't have been on board with. But then again, his personality was such that you know, Leninism actually matched Marx's personality pretty well, if not his written word. And then you, that itself, or that version what uh, what Lobachevsky calls the kind of the brutalized version of the of the ideology will then morph into the dissimulative, like manipulative, psychopathic version where it just it, that's when it just becomes a total mask where there's where there's no um, no relation to to the true motivations of the people using it. So kind of like a you could call it a three phase sequence to the ideology. So what's going on with with the woke ideology? I recently read a couple books by some uh, some Polish guys. One was The Demon and Democracy by Richard Legutko, and the other one just came out was Homo Americanus, The Rise of uh, Totalitarian Democracy in America by Zbigniew Janowski. And both of them, um, of course, they're, they're both Polish. They both lived in, the so- in, the, in Poland, not the Soviet Union, both lived in Poland during communism in the... Um, I don't. I can't remember how old they they both are, but they would have. They probably would have. Would have been there in the eighties, in the seventies. Um, I think they might have each been born, probably you know, sometime mid century. So at least the latter the latter part of the of the the period of communist rule in Poland, and they're, they're both sharing their observations of not only American culture but Western culture, and the basically a large scale criticism of the ideology of liberal democracy. So not just the last 10 years when wokeness has seemingly taken over, but, you know, going back to John Stuart Mill and, and the, the early, the early democratic thinkers and liberal thinkers. And so it's interesting to, to read their take because they go back to the very beginning. Someone like, uh, like James Lindsay and, and Helen Pluckrose and a lot of the people that are focusing on critical race theory will We'll look at what's been happening recently and then trace the, the philosophical trends, you know, back through critical theory and, and the postmodernists and see how things have, have kind of tracked out on that, from that. Really, have, well, that aren't part of the societal mainstream that then got tracked through of the new law. I've 
breached pretty much every aspect of of Western society. Mm -hmm. But I think putting like these guys and Lobachevsky together, you the, the question would be: Well, what were the weaknesses inherent in in liberalism in West in liberal democracies that made that possible? Was it strictly this kind of this foreign um, this foreign illiberal idea that infected liberalism, or was there a weakness within liberal liberalism itself? And so they're kind of arguing that they're they're, they're looking for the weaknesses inherent in in liberal democratic thought. And so this was actually I read, one review I read of cynical theories was asked that very question. It's like that well they don't really talk about what might be the the flaws in the in the basic ideas. So this is something that that probably I'm guessing Lobachevsky would be would be open to, you know, if he were alive, because he he talks about the the philosophies of the eighteenth, nineteenth centuries that pretty much led to all of the all of the forms of Western government today, and that they they are all founded on a on a a view of human nature that is incomplete. You could put it that way, or that's that's tainted by this kind of like schizoid vision of human of humanity that doesn't take into account the the variety and the and the actual richness of human nature and and experience. Kind of like force fits human nature into a um, like a cookie cutter model. And then applies tries to apply that to how to, to organize a society. Well, that doesn't that doesn't actually work. So so all of the philosophies that have influenced the the formation, the grad, gradual formation of Western societies over the last couple hundred years, two three hundred years, have baked into them some some of those weaknesses. And so so you can so just like there's the well, we can look at that again in terms of this these phases. You have a system um, of philosophical ideas, uh, liberal democratic ideas, which people, which the like the thinkers that were thinking these ideas, like Mill, Mill for example, knew knew and was aware of the the problems inherent in democracy, which have been apparent since Plato. Um, like everyone, kind of is is aware or has been aware of. The, where the, the the bad directions that democracy can go and Tocqueville you know identified this one after in his visits to America and, and seeing what was going on in the United States and but you could say that things were kind of like sailing pretty well for you know a couple hundred years of course you know or at least relative to the Soviet Union and then but something has changed like uh, even these Polish guys, Yanovsky and and Lugutko, kind of say, well, like this last ten years, like something. Like, uh, well, you can go back to the eighties, and that's when the the rise of political correctness. But then these last five ten years have just been like something crazy has been going on, and that's where we see this wokeness, which, which is founded on ideas that are pretty much antithetical to a lot of the the basic basic ideas of liberalism like you could call them Ill, an illiberal you know philosophy and illiberal ideas but there's still um but there's still similarities like they they do come out they do come out of the same soil the same tradition like with the focus on equality um there there are certain ideals at least on the surface that that are congruent with um well and it, and i think it's why people who who live in liberal democracies seem to be so susceptible to them because they are a caricature, you could call them that, a caricature of liberal ideas. Um, because from the perspective of Eastern Europeans, it seems, at least like the Poles, the Poles look at Americans and, and say they're just obsessed with equality. And they have been. And that was, and that was something that had been um, like baked into American politics. It's this idea of equality, the, 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 the idea that anyone can be president, you know, that, that anyone can, can, rise to to a position of of wealth and authority or or politics so there's no hereditary castes or classes there's no hereditary monarchy it's this open system um where the the, the divisions between classes are 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 labile open and 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 passable so you can have a person who's born into nothing who becomes something and so that th there is this ideal of 
of equality, and the, the non-wokists would call it like equality of opportunity, but there's still that there is a tendency in the the ideal of equality to to look at any disparity and want to want to level it at least on a for me at least it seems at least on an unconscious level it doesn't necessarily have to be that conscious like you can be you can be consciously um you can consciously like accept the accept disparities but th- there's almost like this this inner pull towards towards equality well that person really is like really poor you know they should be moved a bit more and you know it's it's inherent in taxation that well the the rich should just pay a little bit more taxes and there's there's this constant constant pull towards equality and egalitarianism and well what's the what's the so the the logical conclusion to that the logical end if you take that to the extreme is total equality not just equality of opportunity but equality of outcome and so that i think what these guys would argue is that that is an inherent weakness in the in the ideology of equality itself which can then then gets caricatured into this idea of okay well there are disparities there are things that there are inequalities and now what we can what we want is to to make those right so it doesn't matter if if we if we violate some like social norm or value that you know that western society has has developed over over the generations um because equality is the most important thing and that's when we have that's that's when we've approached this kind of woke caricature of of equality which is it's the same it was the same dynamic in the in the soviet union with communism is equality where we're going to we're going to lift up the we're going to tear down the the undeserving like landowning rich class and rise up the the poor so that everyone will be equal um and the the advantage of that well the advantage of that is that it's the the perfect vehicle for the people to then use cynically and manipulatively and deceitfully to for their own aims and at that point at that point it doesn't matter that anyone actually wants any kind of equality like there's at least a goal inherent in woke ideology there is uh so you could you could look at just one dimension in terms of um, what's going on at universities where there isn't perfect representation of all of the um, racial identities and and sexual identities and gender identities so if you could come up with a, a complex like three-dimensional pie chart of where everyone where everyone is what the the exact demographics of every category are then you could say okay all of these we have to totally replicate this picture of of american society in every instance like within um you know university hiring or um or universal or university like a uh, student uh, applications so this percent of people need to be this this percent of people need to be this and if it if it doesn't match that then we have to say um okay no to this no to these people yes to these people we need more of these people and that's at least a goal it's a crazy goal but it's it's still a goal so you're going to have people who believe in that goal and want that to be want that to be the direction that things are going in and arguably you have a lot of people today that want those things that see see these disparities see how the the, the there aren't enough um latino people in in this field of of um agronomy or you know or uh astronomy or whatever and and so they're going to to force fit it to make sure that now a certain percentage of of students in this discipline are going to be that and apply that to to everything the next phase after that is that none of that actually matters that the the ideology becomes something that is strictly used for whatever whatever aim well then it becomes um, you know what Arthur Verslewis calls an ideocracy. It's the the ideology. The ideology is strictly used f- 
for purposes of maintaining power. And that's when you get that's when you'll get a lot of ex woke people who who will say, "Well, this isn't what we wanted. You know, we wanted equality. We wanted equal representation in all of these fields." And then the people in charge will just say, "You're not being real wokeists. Um, you know, off to the gulag with you." Um, you're counter revolutionaries. You're actually working against our cause and so white supremacists. The white supremacists, exactly. So, so as crazy as the the true believers are, they will they will become less and less important. And even well, when these things happen, it's typically the the true believers that are like kicked the hardest. So. That's my short answer. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. semi-short answer. Um, well, that took things in a, a bit of a different direction than I had a, originally formulated it in my mind, but it was a, a good flushing out of one aspect of the question because now that you're talking about it, uh, I realize just how broad uh, a question what I originally asked actually is. Um, because, well, I'll just say like, one aspect of what I was thinking about when I when I was asking that question is, uh, it seems like wokeism is well. It's like you were saying, like it is just a it's a vehicle by which uh, these people who have uh, ends and means or ends and goals in mind that aren't what normal people would accept use in order to reach those goals and ends. Um. And so looking at it that way, I was thinking about it in terms of uh, there's a more fundamental aspect to uh, wokeism as a, as a fullest philosophy, I guess you could say. And that is like what David Ray Griffin calls naturalism Sam, which is sensationist, atheistic, and materialistic. And so in that sense, uh, there is this pull uh, from the wokest that we, there is, uh, what is it, earthly imminence? versus like a spiritual transcendence and that and that's kind of what it is at odds so where the the wokists would say that we need to create a utopia on earth uh because you know this is where we are and there's there's nothing else uh, there is i guess like more traditional uh societies would say that spiritual transcendence is what's more important because uh we are spiritual beings in a physical body <clears throat> and so to ignore all spiritual transcendence in favor of trying to make uh the impossible possible is is folly it's futile um so that was just another aspect of of what i was uh originally uh thinking but uh again it's in terms of a, a distraction like you were saying it's a I mean you've already pointed it out that that it's it's already I guess wokeism itself is already a move towards this more uh psychopathic uh overt takeover um you know there's no it's already got built within it this uh us versus them mentality it, it's baked into it. You're either, you know, pro equity or you're a white supremacist. You're either pro, you know, redistribution of wealth or you're a racist, N you know, disregarding everything that, that makes up society for the reasons that it does. I mean, you know, one reason why there's not a whole lot of, uh, Hispanics astronomers, could be because there's no Hispanic astronomers. Like there, there's no like oppressive like group of white men who are saying no, we can't let Hispanic people into astronomy because that would destroy astronomy. It could just be that there aren't any, and so like nobody has has that to to look up to as a as a possible means to uh, to to learn and grow and to you know provide for their family. I mean, it could be that simple, um, but that as a possibility is inherently wrong from the wokest perspective because everything always comes down to race and racism because you know this is a white society and yada yada blah 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 well so 
It's interesting to think about where Western society has been in the past few decades and how in the 60s and 70s and 80s you had um, an arguably earlier a very strong movement towards uh, self-help and individuation and alternative spiritual practices. And you can even say that there is a lot about the New Age movement and, and other uh, dimensions to a person working on themselves that's pure fluff and, and not necessarily constructive. Uh, by the same token, uh, there is something to be said for um, all the all the tools that have been made available to people to work on themselves, to become aware of the fact that they may be or have dimensions to their personality that are character disturbed uh, or uh, self entitled or narcissistic, and so w- with this new. Uh, or not so new development in woke thinking, in in ideology, there is this permission, this encouragement, this facilitation of uh, externalizing all the reasons for why you yourself may be unhappy, or or not um, self actualizing your 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 life, or incorporating uh, constructive approaches to making one's life better. Uh, so all of that's been, or I would say much of, much of whatever is um, of, of a good value, of, of something that represents taking personal responsibility, of building oneself up by one's own efforts, is now conveniently, uh, if not replaced, you're, you're offered on this silver platter everything that you're told you deserve to have being part of a disadvantaged uh, group. And it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a very deceptive and manipulative and damaging uh, way of thinking. Uh, that has been um, introduced in the highest kinds of uh, institutions in in Western society. I mean, you have stories coming out uh, about, th- this is an interesting one, a Christian magazine editor says he won't hire Ivy League graduates anymore because they're either woke and self-important or too afraid to stand up to cancel culture. So he's talking about universities like Princeton and Yale and Harvard that are churning out these uh, individuals who have been so thoroughly indoctrinated uh, into this, into woke thinking and, and, uh, and attitudes that he can't even get an authentic uh, bit of writing from them. They have, they have lost whatever, um, whatever might naturally be good about their talents or their use of their talents to, to these very uh, narrowly defined uh, parameters in thinking and behaving and, and approaches to politics and society. So um, along those lines, uh, there have been, um, cause I had a different take on your, on your question, Adam. Or at least I heard it differently when you voiced it a few days ago. Uh, and what I was thinking when you asked, is wokeness a distraction? Was, you know, it begs the question, um, it, is wokeness, well, first, what is it a distraction for, actually? Uh, what, is it, uh, what is it camouflage or conceal um, or... Uh, or not permit people to see that they should be seeing, that they should be recognizing. And you said it a few minutes ago, it, it's, it's psychopathy, or if not outright psychopathy, then pathological thinking. Um, and I think it's very difficult for people, most people, to make the leap from 
uh, from what is ostensibly presented as this, you know, good intentioned idea or ideology to recognizing where the thinking is sick, where it, it's, it is actually divisive and, and cuts off all of the possibility for dialogue or for uh, compromise or for um, finding new solutions. It's, it's the cliched, it's my way or the highway. Um, there's another story uh, that, I, that I thought was quite interesting. It was called, my, my woke employees tried to cancel me. Here's how I fought back. And in this story, a, a person who uh, runs a nonprofit organization helping victims of trauma around the world, uh, she and her husband started getting accused of, uh, of not respecting the feelings of her employees. And what she had to get around her, her noodle very quickly was just how indoctrinated many of her employees were in critical theory. And, and so she had, to, she had to present as much of her defense of the way they were running things in terms of uh, pure reasoning and facts and information. And the rebuttal from her employees was that she was being objective, where this was uh, subjectively positional, which means that you can't argue with a subjective point of view. You have to, otherwise you'd be invalidating it, and you'd be guilty of being a white supremacist, uh, cis, normal, whatever. Um, so there is this kind of, uh, a built-in resistance to any kind of um, other data or other information or reasoning or, or, or real logic that, would, that threatens to destroy you as a person. So you, th there's, no, there's very little winning in having any kind of constructive discussion. And as it happens, some of her employees left at the, after the conversation and those who were, um, those who were reasonable enough to acknowledge where she was coming from in her arguments stayed on. Uh, well, that takes, <clears throat> that takes another, uh, angle of, of what I was thinking, uh, in terms of like wokeness being a distraction. It's also the way that it, Again, it's not so much like the ideology itself, but but rather how it shapes thinking. And so, like you're saying, it 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 shapes people into viewing objective reality in this uh, oppressive way, rather than being something that one can work with and uh, uh, in a bit in a beneficial way that you know can make things better by using facts and reason. It's now this this oppressive thing that must be shut out and and dismissed um based on you know your subjective uh feelings because you know anything that contradicts what i think and believe is, is scary and so i must be like that's another thing is like i must be allowed to say no to a to reality like i must be allowed to reject it outright because i don't agree with it which is another uh you know aspect of of ways of thinking uh, that comes along with this this woke uh, reasoning um, that is destructive for the individual, um, but also very useful for people who are looking to manipulate. Like for the people who are looking to try and manipulate society and manipulate people, like what more could you ask for than for the people themselves to voluntarily decide not to think and not to reason like what more could you ask for it's just like perfect thank you that's exactly what i wanted it's an uncritically thinking population that will do exactly what i tell them i'm reading a book uh frank decoder's book on 
<clears throat> the cultural revolution right now. I'm just at the spot where where the the Red Guard has essentially created themselves, and it's when the first uh, it's when the violence breaks out essentially. So the the students, the Red Guard, Mao basically gave public permission to the students to do whatever they want, and that uh, to rebel was a good thing, and always listen to the masses because because through their actions and and uh and slogans and talking the the masses determine what is right and what is wrong and you will then be able to 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 weed out the the monsters and demons as as was the phrase for anyone bad that the the cultural revolution would go after so one of the fat one of the aspects of the cultural revolution were these uh posters i think they were called like big letter posters or something so it was just like buildings everywhere was just plastered with these uh, pictures or posters with, um, you know, Chinese writing, big block letters, um, slogans, or lists, the names of people. And so to be on a list, you know, this, so lists would just go up of people to be targeted and it could have a name and it could have a reason. So it could have a reason like one was um, essentially, the, this is my translation or my, my paraphrase of the translation, um, you know, has been sitting on his ass since the liberation, you know, Person X has been sitting on his ass since the liberation. A uh, person, person Y, um, a rightist or person, person left, um, you know, just bad guy. And so then these people would be targeted, and it was it was like Lord of the Flies level craziness with these kids, um, like beating their teachers to death, torturing them for hours, um, locking entire families up in their house to to starve and die. Um, like if, if you can imagine it, it probably happened and, and these were students and, uh, so it was just an orgy of violence among, among kids, university students, you know, kids as young as 12, 13, um, up to university students just, um, going mad. And so they had, they were given permission not to think. And it's, it's this, this like mass hysteria that kind of takes over where, there is no thought. All, all you need is a list, a list of a person with any ad hoc, you know, justification. You could write anything on there. It's like, oh, that's the person we're going after him. And next, next thing you know, you find his dead body in a, you know, in a ravine somewhere, um, or burned alive. Uh, there were, well, yeah, I just wanted to share how that, how this actually plays out. <laughs> well, I, I think that that speaks to another dimension to this whole phenomena, which is fear. Uh, because I think a lot of people, especially when there's this mob of, of individuals in your kind of milieu or um, work environment or uh, social uh, context, when the, when, the mo when the woke mob decides to do their hysterical um, trouncing of an individual for not quite you know, getting it right. Uh, there is this incredible amount of fear that gets induced in an individual where in order to not be perceived as whatever, an evil person ultimately, they have to apologize and go back on what they said or qualify it. And, and that's a very scary thing, especially since we're social beings and have some interdependence and 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 would like to be seen as a good person, plain and simple. So uh, there is a um, you mentioned that earlier, Harrison, that this is it's been weaponized. It has been. These are terror tactics, is what they are. Uh, and to realize that terror tactics are being um, programmed into the minds of uh, large numbers of people uh, successfully, precisely because they're being trained in the highest echelons of education. And they're seeing their politicians uh, kowtow to these ideas. And their favorite entertainers are, are doing the talk and the, and the walk of this kind of 
uh, behavior. It becomes, well, it's not only socially accepted, uh, but it's encouraged. And it's a bit of the carrot and the stick. You will be accepted and promoted and, uh, and paid and educated if you believe these things. And if you don't, we're going to beat the living shit out of you. It's not much of a choice for people who have only achieved a certain amount of growth within themselves uh, or who don't, haven't yet thought seriously about what this phenomena is and what it's informed by. So you have this incredible number of vulnerable people who have little to no capacity of critical thinking are in fact told, like you were saying, Adam, earlier, don't think. You don't have to critically think. Your uh, emotions and reactions and anger, because we're telling you it's okay and you're supposed to be angry about this, will suffice to be good, to be part of this new movement of goodness, which is um, an extraordinary con, an extraordinary deception that uh, is, is successful among a large number of people. Now, the good news, here's the good news. The good news is that there are people in various areas of work and, uh, and politics and what have you who, have, who are coming out and very articulately making their case for why uh, all of this behavior is not only wrong, but destructive and divisive. So um, we're seeing the pendulum swing back, or at least get a little more vocal in the direction of uh, reasonableness, sanity, um, rationality. Uh, the question is, how many of those who have already been indoctrinated, like the Black Lives Matter guy you mentioned a little earlier, Harrison, have it within themselves to walk away? How much more do they have to see and understand before they can make the choice to call out uh, these, these developments for all of the uh, wrongheadedness that they represent? Yeah, that's one of the and unfortunate things about uh, about human beings is once they've decided to just shut out something and not listen, there's, I mean, it's like you were saying before, Harrison, there's just, if somebody's using this for a specific reason other than like a logical one, there's no reasoning that can be done to persuade them to change their mind because it wasn't based on reason in the first place. So, you know, it's, there's nothing you can do. That said, uh, one of the beautiful things about suffering is that suffering can change your mind. Um, and of course, the other side of that of that is the fact that you know you might have to go through hell to get there. So there's there's no telling what kind of uh, horrible things these people might have to go through before they realize that uh, uh, being part of the the woke revolution is not the uh, best or most equitable or rational thing to do. But, I mean, that's kind of one of the beautiful things about living in a, a free will universe is people get to make their own choices and, you know, choose their suffering. Unfortunately, sometimes that, in that involves uh, a lot of other people suffering with them. But... You know, better that than living in a totally totalitarian state where everything you do and everything you think is uh, categorized and held up against the, the ideological dictates of the hour because it will change. And I mean, as we've seen in the past couple of years, it, it always changed. The, the goalposts always move. Uh, 
and then history gets rewritten along those lines, these newly updated lines. So everything you say and think will be held against you in a court of farce. <laughs> and uh, there's nothing you can do about that except uh, stop it from happening in the first place. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to live in a totally totalitarian nightmare where everything you say, think, and do, because that's another aspect of this whole thing is the, uh, it's a technocratic merger uh, on top of that. So everything that you post on social media, who was it? There was, there was a, two football players recently, uh, football in the sense of European football, um, who got, I don't know if it was fired from their fo football clubs or if it was just like uh, penalized or suspended um, but these are like fairly young guys who have been canceled for something that they wrote like 12 years ago when they were 15 mm -hmm. on social media. Like what the hell? How, how can you judge someone today for something that they wrote when they were a kid? <laughs> Every single person on the face of this earth has done or said something That's so dumb. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the point. It's like uh, you don't need, you don't need a Stasi with, uh, like in East Germany. I think East Germany was the was the communist country with the greatest like percentage of Stasi agents and informants. Can't remember if it was that or if there was one other Eastern European country, but because you need you need a you need sources to get dirt on people that you can then use on them. The glorious thing about the internet is that everyone has already put their dirt on the internet. Mm -hmm. So it just needs to be dragged out when necessary. And it's easy. So, so, <laughs> so everyone is, whatever, um, there's probably, there's something on the internet out there for practically everyone that can and will be dragged out if, if required. Um, if you ever poke your head up too far. Then it's choppy choppy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what will be used. I believe. But yeah, you could, you could probably even, you could shut down the internet today and just use the backlog of information and, and you'd have enough to, to go after anyone for, for the rest of their lives. It wouldn't work on the, you know, the next generation, but at least you'd have enough, enough material to potentially cancel anyone. Mm-hmm. Well, even the, um, like I, you know, I know some people who are at present fully indoctrinated in the cult of woke and, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter supporters, Antifa supporters. Uh, there's one guy I know who, um, I think it was Trump who said something along the line or or somebody else who had said that uh, Antifa was a terrorist organization or something like that. And uh, this guy that I know, he's like, you know, he said, if supporting Antifa makes me a terrorist, then, you know, by God, I'm a terrorist. Something to that effect. So, you know, there's, he's, he's full on lost his marbles um, and lost the plot. Uh, but the thing is, you know, he's woke today. But 10 years ago, he has, he said things and, and this is like not even You've got the dirt. <laughs> controversial. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just not fully woke mm -hmm. from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if you judge people back then by today's standards, that's what I mean by everyone will fall mm -hmm. because you can't predict what the standard will be tomorrow in order to adhere to that standard today there's there's no possible way you can do it because it's in the future and you don't know what it's going to be so there's no way that you can not be uh a a victim of this kind of uh i don't know what, what you would call it other than like witch hunt yeah, this type, this type of witch hunt. There, there's no one who could, who would be uh, excluded from it because, by the changing standards, everyone falls short. I mean, it's like when they tore down the statue of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. 
uh, these are people who did great things. Frederick Douglass was a black man, for crying out loud. But they still tore down his statue because he wasn't woke. Never mind that he, you know, there was no such thing and there's no way for that to have been possible. Like, that all goes out the window. Um, because we must judge yesterday by the standards of today because I don't freaking know. Well, while you were saying that, I, I, I remembered what Kolakowski, the question he was answering in this little excerpt in the Lenin Think article, he was trying to answer the question of why, why the, the communists invariably, eventually, went after their own supporters. So actually went after the communists themselves. And um, so he gave his answer for that, but the, like Lobachevsky gives his answer for that is because as crazy as the initial supporters might be, they were still relatively normal people. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a bit of bra brain damage here and there, <laughs> but relatively normal people. And, and, and their ideals could then be, this is what Kolakowski was saying, their ideals could then be used as a way of criticizing the government. Because whenever the government didn't live up to its own ideals, then you could say, oh, well, look, you know, Look at look at the disparity. So, so you have to go out after the the true believers because they're the ones that will hold you to account. So you kill all of the true believers or otherwise neutralize them, and then you've then you've 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 made it. You've got it. You've got it set for the next sixty years. You can just do whatever you want and just constantly change the rules and constantly go after anyone who who's an actual uh, like starry-eyed communist and those are those are the ones that are going to those are the ones that are going to are going to get it so the the same thing will apply to to wokeism if if the trajectory trajectory doesn't stay doesn't change and that's the the, the way things actually go mm -hmm. then that's the that's the end result is like the vast majority of all of the woke people today will be gone well, here's where it gets somewhat interesting, I think, and that's because uh, among a certain percentage of people in the West, there is an acute understanding of what it is that we're witnessing here. That there is uh, this tradition of uh, cultural Marxism that is playing itself out uh, right before our eyes. And even if many don't understand it that way, their values are so uh, ingrained and felt and lived and understood that there's this kind of very natural um, rejection and in some cases disgust for uh, woke ideology. And so uh, I think a, a part of what we're going to see, uh, and, and it's the serious beginnings of it have already occurred is a backlash is a uh, is a very normal if not um, strong response among a certain percentage of people to uh, the the lies the crazy making uh, the violence um, that uh, that we've been witnessing for the past few years and especially in 2020 so um there will be a kind of a a, a clashing of um realities if you will that um that will manifest itself not only in heated arguments uh as things progress uh but also uh through action and that's another thing that the woke may want to consider, that there might be, they might per perceive a great deal of passivity and, uh, and inaction, or they might think of it as, as quiet white guilt or, or whatever, but there are probably a, a number of individuals um, in high numbers who are quietly biding their time and waiting until uh, they 
what they see as an opportunity to respond in ways that they feel are appropriate to uh, to what we've been wit- witnessing with wokeness. And I think, so, I think that's probably what they want. They being the woke, the woke, a, a yeah. kind of a clash. Mm-hmm. So then, then that that gives them the excuse to to let out all of their revolutionary anger. And I mean, look, the pretty much every ruling institution is woke enough already that they'd have the military on their side. They'd have, that's the thing, you know, yeah. they have the world economic forum on their side. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So even if they do, uh, even if there is a certain contingent within the United States, as an example, uh, who actively want to push back against this in some kind of a way, and probably a small percentage of them who would want a violent pushback in some kind of a way mm-hmm. that feeds right into the agenda of the people who already have power. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. They've already got it. Like you said, they've got the military. They've got the police. I mean, yes, there's people within these groups who don't necessarily agree with the agenda, but this is your livelihood. You either obey or you you starve. Or they're domestic terrorists. Yeah, or they get relabeled as domestic terrorists. So any violent response to wokeism will be rightfully or not because of course it could like you 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 will get crazies that come out against wokeism in Mm -hmm. a in a violent uh in a violent way but any any violent response will be deemed and judged as domestic terrorism and be held up as as an example of what happens when you resist which will only further cement control which will potentially create even more resistance which it becomes violence if which of it becomes violent will violent will further <laughs> further the process <laughs> yes. until um until the, the the only people who would have the will to actively resist are in a camp somewhere mm-hmm. yeah. so uh this is all by saying uh that we're in quite a pickle <laughs> because <laughs> no, no, no. uh at, you know, on, on some level, this is quite, you know, if, if at these very high levels of um, power, uh, all of this has been gamed out, and there's some suggestion that it, it may be, uh, there, there are all of these um, contingencies for uh, what are probably anticipated natural responses to what we're seeing. So, well, um, yeah, you've got, uh, like the CIA who's been involved with all different kinds of like black Panthers and, uh, the KKK, like they're, they're in all of it. Yes. So like, That's of the course idea. they would totally be fine with like setting up some dupes like they did with the Muslim terrorists, quote unquote. Well, they just did that with, uh, the, the, the Michigan kidnappers, the FBI. Um, did you guys read about that? The, the kidnapping plot for, for Whitmer. Yes. How the, they were a, a three percenter group it was like I don't I can't remember how many people were involved like something like twelve people and seven of them were FBI informants or <laughs> under, <laughs> undercover operatives that were like yeah, that's <laughs> doing right doing everything important about it like at, at, at every integral phase in the plot the the, the the confidential human sources were the ones pushing it pushing it so so yeah there's that but. You wanted to end on a good note, so the, the good note—the good note—is actually that, for example, parents are are doing the parents are the ones standing up to it at the moment at their like school boards against teaching cr- critical race theory in in classes, and they're actually they've won some you know important successes. They've made some important successes. How, how do you phrase that? They've been successful in important ways <laughs> in uh, recently. So they're actually doing this, and and it's like I said, it, it's they have been effective, and it's been nonviolent. You know, mm-hmm. they're just at at this point, there is at least still some room for for uh, a, a reasonable and effective response to to the crazy making. Like, it, it, and there's still there's still Florida and Texas. You know that Didn't that will be the last just... to go. Uh, didn't DeSantis like just ban critical theory in schools or was that critical somewhere else? Theory. Yeah, there have been a few states, I think. I think Texas might have been the latest one just the other day. 
Maybe yesterday or something like that. But okay. But yeah. So, uh, but yeah, who knows? We'll see. <laughs> so, is that everything? Yeah. yeah. We'll see you all next week, everyone. Thanks.